Um, so tonight we're going to do, um, as David said, post-processing challenge. And um, I hope to have a bit of discussion as well as we're going to look at some uh, post-processing that our members have submitted. So the way the meeting is going to work is we posted nine raw images. Actually, I said there were 10, but I couldn't count because I missed out number six. So there were only nine. <laughs> um, what we're going to do is look at um, the raw image first, and then um, we'll look at everybody's uh, post-processing um, versions of that. And if the person is here, they can discuss what they did and why they did it and um, maybe give us some tips and tricks about what sort of post-processing they used on the image. So if you talk about your edits, that would be great to share what you did with everyone else. Um, I've also got a slideshow that we can maybe, if we have time to look at, which just shows everyone's images compared to each other and compared to the RAWs. And then importantly, as David mentioned, at the end of the meeting, we're going to send you um, a link to a very short three question survey that should take you two minutes to answer just pertaining to this particular meeting. So what I'm interested to know from everyone tonight is what degree of post-processing do you use? Because, you know, you can do something really simple where you just do take your photo into Lightroom, do some global processing where you adjust the entire image at once by, you know, pulling the sliders maybe for saturation or for um, texture. You want to add some um, vibrance and, and that's going to adjust the entire image um, globally. With, so everything's going to get adjusted. Um, that's sort of a, a simple way to do it. Um, there's also lots of plugins and presets that you can use. And I know a lot of people uh, in the club use presets like the Nick collection, where you've got Silver Effects Pro and other plugins that basically you can open your image and look at the particular presets and, and choose the one you want. And I think we've got some examples of that tonight. And then there's um, doing local adjustments where you can actually select specific parts of your image and then choose to just adjust those selectively. So this is really good to do if you say, have a picture of an animal in a forest and you just want to add some more detail to the fur or some more clarity or sharpen the fur, but you don't want to sharpen the background or the sky, for example, whatever the animal's sitting in, then you can do that now really easily using some of the new masking tools that are available in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw. Um, so that's doing local adjustments. Um, and then some of you have probably seen or at least heard of the um, sky replacement tool in Photoshop, which was introduced last year. And it's a very simple AI plugin where you simply just go into Photoshop, you select edit, replace my sky and you get a brand new sky. So things are getting easier these days because there's a lot of new, um, there's a lot of new AI that does this stuff pretty much for you. And then you can get really, you can get as complicated as you want. You can go into Photoshop, you can add masks and layers and do dodging and burning to increase highlights, you know, um, to reduce shadows, to add texture to very specific parts of your image. And then you can get into things like luminance panels in Photoshop, which are so complicated. I don't even know how to use them. So there's a there's lots of degrees of doing post-processing. So I'm interested in what people have done tonight and if they can share as we should go through the photos and tell us. So as I mentioned, at the end of the meeting, we're just gonna send you a three question survey. I will send you this link at the end of the meeting. So you don't need to worry about copying it now. So let's just jump straight into the images and see what we've got. So we've got um, a few people here tonight that um, submitted images, which is great. So can everyone see that image? And is, is it mm -hmm. in full screen? Yes, I can see. Great. So as I mentioned, we had um, nine raw images and there were varying degrees of, of of goodness coming off the camera. So this obviously is pretty underexposed. Um, and we had some really great, um, see if I can go forward, really great interpretations of this particular image. Mm. This, this one I think is from Barney. Barney, do you want to talk about this a little bit? 
Um, sure. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Rachel. Uh, one of the things that there, there are a couple of them. I got carried away with this one. All right. Uh, so, um, cause I, I thought it had, I thought it had a lot of potential, but, um, one of the first things I was drawn to was the singularity of the tree over on the far left-hand side. Um, and so the, so I did a severe crop on that. Um, and, um, I, but on the screen, there, there were a number of, number of issues that came up, especially in the sky, because the sky all of a sudden got very, got very blotchy. So um, in Photoshop, what I did was to, to roughly mask out the, um, the, the visible ground in the, uh, in the foreground and, and up the side of the mountain. Um, and then to the sky, just applied some motion blur with a direction of uh, going downward so that that would uh, help with the uh, smooth things out and, and make it look more like rain. So, and then there, there were a number of other things. I, I, I tend to use a lot of luminous, luminosity masks. Um, and um, so that was, that was applied to the, to the foreground and, and to the tree area so that, so that I could selectively uh, uh, brighten, add contrast, uh, saturation and the like without creating excess um, uh, halos. That's it. Right, and I think this one is yours too, Barney, is it? Yeah, yeah, so you can see the tree over on the far left. And and so oh, for yeah. this, I, I, again, I really love the image. The um, I, I, it just screamed to me to be a, a pano. Um, and, um, the, um, and, and again, I, I use a fair number of, of luminosity masks. I, I use a, a program, a plugin for uh, Photoshop called Lumenza. Um, and it's, and it's, it's taken me a while to kind of get the hang of it. And sometime if people are interested, if you have a particular interest in it, I'm, I'm happy to get on a zoom call with you and, and, and show you what I, what I've learned with it, learned about it. Um, but, um, but with, with Lumenza, it was very easy once I cropped this down to pick out, for example, all the trees, um, and then work on those and then work on the bright section in another another mask work on the bright sections of the sky um, so that so that it's, it's not overblown and then on the dark sections of the sky as well so um, uh, you know uh, again there's a lot of, of masking involved that uh, um, that um, culminated in, in in this so Barney I noticed there's a little bit of a kind of a halo around the trees right is that from yeah. the luminosity mask or yeah, no it's, not, it's not David it, it actually is it, 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 it it's kind of embedded it's in the image and and, and um, at least the, the best I could tell and and if I if, if, if I were to really work on this image then I'd go in with a brush um, and with a with a dark brush set at maybe one or two percent kind of go over the edge of those trees and that that would that would make that uh, halo much less uh, much less visible. I kind of like the halo though, especially in the black and white version, because I don't know. I think. Yeah, and this was this was just a, a straight up um, conversion to black and white uh, off the color image in uh, using um, Silver Effects Pro as the as the which is part of the that. Sorry, Bunny. That's part of the Nix collection, right? The Silver X. Right. Yeah. yeah. And and there's there's some thirty, well, twenty or thirty different uh, um, presets that you can use for starting. And and this one went for um, um, high structure, high contrast. And it may be a bit much. It's one of those things you gotta you gotta do, and then you gotta put down and come back and look at it a week and. Uh, a week from now and say, yeah, is this, is this too harsh or is this the way I want it? And if anyone is interested in Nick and they don't have it, it's spelled N-I-K, Nick Collection. Um, and they usually have pretty good sales, especially around Black Friday. But even sometimes you'll probably find you can buy the whole collection at a discount if you look around, if you're interested in this sort of these sort of plugins. I think their black and white presets are actually really good. I use them a lot. 
and um, but they also have sharpening tools. They have um, color tools. They have all kinds of different presets, and so they're they're worth um, delving into if you're interested in this kind of effect. I think they let you play for it, play with it for free for what thirty days or something. Yeah, yeah probably most software does. So yeah, if you're interested, it's it's N I K is how you spell it. So this one, I think, Gigi, is this yours? Um, I, I think it's mine, except it's got Barney's name at the top. <laughs> oh, hang on. No, it's yours because it's got okay. G-H, yeah. 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 Yeah, I think it's mine. Um, you know, it's interesting. I think that on my screen here anyway, it doesn't look as bright as it did to me when I did it. I, I don't know. I don't know why that is, but at any rate, um, I... I tried to get rid of a lot of that mucky stuff in the foreground. Mm. And then I tried to put the emphasis on the sky. And um, because I thought that was the most interesting part about the photograph was the sky. And then I tried to just brighten up the trees by um, using the masking tools. Um, that's pretty much all I did. I liked the picture a lot. That's a very yeah. moody photograph, but. Yeah, I'm, uh, who is this one? Is that the original? Um, does anyone know who this one is? Michael, is this yours? I don't know. <laughs> is there okay. any? Um, if, if you hit the. Yeah, in, it's, the other, it's Michael yeah. Cohen. Michael yeah. Cohen, yeah. So I must have been really depressed when I did this processing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think the whole thing struck me as this really sort of dark and stormy night kind of a thing. Um, and so I just made it a really dark and stormy night. And, and it is. Yeah. Um, this is mine and actually this photo, the raw was taken by me and I can tell you the situation. Um, I was out on my kayak on Oxbow and I was heading down the river, which is the opposite direction to what you can see here. And I turned around and I saw this and I paddled as fast as I could <laughs> to, get, <laughs> to get away from it. But um, oh, you didn't we, the we still got absolutely <laughs> totally saturated because oh. <laughs> you can't you can't go back up the river you know you've just got to keep going down with the current so we we, we headed down to pacific landing as fast as we could but we didn't make it but yeah i just thought um, so all i did here too um is i did selectively lighten the trees and um i added contrast to the sky and i i think i probably brushed in the tree uh, in the sky as well to add a bit more drama although having seen Barney's interpretation of this now I think I didn't add enough drama to the sky I like what Barney did a lot but I, I also liked in this image just the contrast between the colors of the trees and the darkness of the sky so so Rachel one of the comments that I would make just looking at all of these is that um, one of the things that, that can tend to happen in, in digital processing is that, is that we, we sometimes do things because we can do them. And, you know, there's an awful lot that you can do digitally that, that we could never do with, with film and, and in a dark room. But, but I, I try to interpret my own processing so that it's it's like something that still could be real, that, that could have occurred. Um, and, you know, sometimes we see tremendous oversaturation or we see crazy color changes. And I think that, you know, at least for, for the way I like to try to process, I, you know, I don't, I don't want it to have too much of a look like it has been processed. Mm. And, you know, if you go back to the raw image there, um, yeah, what's the raw there? You know, you can you can see that it was it was it was a it was a fairly dark afternoon, 
um, because the clouds have moved in and there is not a lot of light on, on anything. So I think when I was processing it, I sort of took that into account. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, you can see from the histogram, can everyone see the histogram that in this instance, I underexposed it. It's not exposed to the right, which I would normally do. I would normally have that push that histogram up. Um, but I think because I was on my kayak and I was just panicking, I just. <laughs> <laughs> Survival also, was more important. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And also when I go out in my boat, I just take my old DSLR. I don't have my. Um, mirrorless and so i can't see in my viewfinder i cannot see my histogram which is i don't know if any of you guys when you switch if you if you're using mirrorless if you use your histogram as you're shooting because if you look at if you put it into your electronic viewfinder you can actually see as you're shooting if your photo is exposed correctly um, and you can't do that in a dslr and so you have to take the photo, look at the photo on the back of your DSLR, see where the histogram is, and then adjust accordingly. I didn't have time to do that in this instance, <laughs> so you can see it to be underexposed as well. But yeah, I agree with you, Michael, about that. And you know, some some people might not agree with that. They might because there's you know you can have discussions about well, are you trying to recreate what your eye saw or what your camera saw? And those two things can be different, right? Depending. Mm -hmm. So real, real quickly, let me just interject for all of us listening. Make sure you're muted if you're not making comments. We're picking up some background noise at times. So. All right. Okay. All right. So the next um, series of photos starts with this one here, which is a raw image. And um, this is... Um, obviously full colors, but it looks pretty dull, right? And I wanted to just quickly, while we're on this, um, I'm actually gonna share a different screen if that's okay, because full colors are notoriously difficult to process because what you see with your eye is, and, and usually if, you know, if you're looking at full colors when there's lots of light coming through the trees, you're just getting these beautiful popping colors coming into your eye and when you take that with your camera it never translates on the sensor like that and so you, I don't know about you guys but I often end up can everyone see this um, raw photo of trees so you know what I saw that day in Alpine was much more bright and poppy than this because the sensor just can't pick up that light and so there's a couple of ways you can process full colors to maximize the the bright colors that you really want to show on the photo that you saw with your eye and you know you can obviously you can go into your basic controls in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw this is Camera Raw but it's exactly the same in terms of the sliders as Lightroom so you can see here that my um, histogram is showing that this is pretty well exposed there's no clipping in the blacks or the whites but it still doesn't look very nice right so one of the things you might do initially is think, okay, I'm gonna adjust the temperature because I want this to be brighter. But if you pull your temperature up towards the yellow, everything turns yellow. So now you're losing your greens that you wanna pop as well. So that's probably not the best place to be adjusting for fall colors. You can go down to your vibrance and saturation. You can pull up your vibrance. And that's going to help a little bit, but you're still going to increase all the colors at once as opposed to selectively increasing them. Same with your saturation, as Michael was saying, that just looks fake, you know, in a way. So I don't know if anyone here uses these tools here, the calibration tools. These are particularly good for pulling up autumn and fall colors. And these have three sets of sliders, red primary, green primary, and blue primary, which basically is reproducing what's on your sensor. So what your sensor has captured. So let's just do an experiment here. Let's pull our saturations of these colors all the way up. And already you can see that's too much, but we can adjust back. So 
if we pull back the reds here, we can see that we're getting, and pull it back to where we get some reds popping up. Um, let's pull back our green, because we don't want too much green, but we want to be able to get that bright red appearing. And then let's pull back our blue a bit. And we can get something like that. You can turn that on and off, on and off. Now see how that is making those colors really pop. And it's doing it selectively by you can adjust the red, the green and the blue without saturating every single color by using a global tool like um, saturation or vibrance, for example. So I know it's not fall yet, but that's something to think about um, when you are shooting fall colors, because I was frequently disappointed when I'd bring images back. I think, well, that's not what I saw with my eye and that's really dull, but you can use the calibration panel in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw to get really nice popping autumn colors. So let's go back to... Um, Rachel, can I uh, make a comment? Of course, yes. Um, one of the things that uh, I started doing, and this was a uh, suggestion from a friend, I didn't come up with it, is to take pictures with my phone uh, mm -hmm. of uh, things when I see them, because the phone has a uh, more, uh, I don't know, it, it has greater vibrancy. It does an HDR. And so it, it helps me to remember what it looked like when I saw it, and I can kind of compare the two. Mm. That's a really good suggestion. Yeah. So here's that raw photo. You can see here that already these colors just look really dull. So let's see what everyone's done in terms of processing. Um, this is Michael's. Michael, can you tell us what you did? Um, so go back to the raw. That's the raw. Yeah, That's so something that you see before you even look at all the colors is I felt that the entire image was overexposed. And what I really wanted to do was to make the colors pop out. And my strategy was, <laughs> gee, if I darken the entire image and then use luminance and saturation in the HSL panel to only mm -hmm. make the things bright that I want to be bright, that would actually create even more accentuation of color. So I first took the whole image down, probably a stop or a stop and a half. And then I went to the greens and I said, okay, let me make the greens a little bit brighter. And I used the luminance on greens and make them brighter. And then I used the luminance on yellows and made them brighter. And then I used um, the saturation on the yellows and the greens. And then I actually did a little bit of brushing to try to get the reds and the oranges in the background. Um, and I did a little bit of dehazing to try to bring them out. And, you know, they didn't really come out as much as I wanted it to. But, you know, now to me, the focal point of the image is those yellow trees, you know, whereas in the original raw image, the focal point was kind of kind of the road or kind of nothing. So that was, that, yeah. that was the strategy. Sorry, I'm just trying to get your images back. I was trying to find the, uh, put this out of the way. Okay, so there you go. So yeah, that's the side by side. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so I mean, you know, the road is way too prominent in the original image. So I had to, you know, basically darken the whole thing. And then um, for, for, for the sky, um, I just used, um, again, the HSL panel and I brought the, the hue to pick up some blue. And, you know, that's, that's an artificial blue, but it was, I, I, I think it's pretty close to, to what, what, what a sky would be, so. Yeah, this particular, I took this raw image and this particular day, it was a terrible day. It was overcast and raining. So it was really not the right day to shoot fall colors. <laughs> so you did a good job of fixing it. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
so this is, I think this is mine. Yeah, so on, on the left is mine and the right is raw. So, so what I've done here, Michael, in my image is what I showed you earlier, just by using the calibration um, yeah. panels in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw. And I've also um, brushed in, in the top here in the cliffs, I've dehazed a bit of that image just to pull some of those colors back. Um, yes. Because as you can see, you you did a better job in the background areas than I did, but but I still think the road is too bright. Right. Yep. Yep. Okay. So let's move on. Okay. So the next one is um, an image of Taggart Lake, and Gigi is going to talk us through what she did. Gigi. So on the right here is the raw and the left here is Gigi's interpretation. Okay. Um, well, I thought it was a little dark, so I tried to brighten everything up a little bit. And then I decided that I really didn't like the rocks on the right. And so I cropped them out. And um, I'm sure I don't remember doing this exactly, but I'm sure I probably went up to the mountain and tried to um, just increase the contrast just a little bit so that you could see it a little better. Um, and that's really all. I mean, it was really a nice image and I didn't think there was much that needed to be done. So that's what I did. Oh, I see. So you've actually, I noticed you've cropped out some of the rocks in the foreground. I like that. I didn't notice that before, but I like what, that you've done that. Well, I, I cropped out the ones on the right. Yeah. Yeah. Because I thought that the line then, the line comes, if you want to follow the line, like you think about um, composition, it goes from the left and then it goes into the lake and then it goes up to the left of the mountain. And I thought that made a really mm. good composition. Yeah, so you kind of, are you talking about your eye goes in, in I'm here? Talking about, yeah, your eye starts in the bottom left. And then oh, up left. the rocks yeah. and then goes to the rocks that are on the lake and then heads up the mountain to the left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. I like your reflection yeah. in the water on the left too, that you can see that better. Mm -hmm. I do think taking out those two rocks on the right, it's a little distracting. Yeah, it's a good move. Yeah, I didn't even notice that these, you mean the big white rocks in the right hand corner here? Yeah. Once they're gone, you notice them because they do look distracting now that they're gone, right? Yeah. Okay, so um, this is Michael's. I'm going to put yours next to the raw image, Michael. You can talk us through what you did. Now, actually, maybe I'll just Let's just put Michael's in full screen first. Does any, can everyone see what Michael's done here? Oh, he put a bird in there. <laughs> <laughs> can everyone see that? With, 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 bird, with yeah. a fish. <laughs> oh, I actually, you know, it's, you know, it's sort of a goofy thing to do, but I actually put that in there because I felt that without it, the the image was sort of lopsided to the right and it needed some balance so i was trying to think of you know one of the things i thought of doing is brightening up those those trees on the left hand side but then you know then then they would have been out of balance with the trees on the right hand side so so just sort of on a whim you know and it's a compositional thing because i like images to have sort of a a, a direction of, of where the eye should go. And I felt that um, with, with the light reads, which I really like, that, that the eye was getting stuck. So mm. by putting the eagle in with the fish, it added sort of a little whimsical piece of balance. And it also detracts a little bit from that muddy mountain that, that I didn't really mm. like. I couldn't figure out what, what to do with. So. So you, I think, let's have a look here. 
You did adjust the mountains though, Michael, didn't you? Yeah, so you can see Michael's pulled, did you just pull down the exposure in the mountains? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, I knocked this down like almost two stops and then I yeah. used gradient filter to, to bring the bottom back. Yeah. And it yeah. looks like you darkened those white stones on the right. Yeah. Yes, I did, because I didn't like those. Again, they were they were sort of fighting with me. So I brushed those to make the luminance more matching to the other stones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, it was a three step process. It was darkening the whole thing. It was brightening up the foreground and then brushing in some highlights um, on the on the on the the foliage and then fixing those rocks. And then yeah. put it, yeah. And actually, that is a really that that bird. I mean, it like you say, you did it kind of as a whimsical thing, but it does actually balance the composition a lot better. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Put that bird in like twenty different places before I decided where it should go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And you know, you know, certainly you you would never really do that um, for real, but. It it but it helps to visualize things like that. So if you're if if you're in a scene like that and, and, and you're shooting that, you know maybe maybe you know plop your tripod down and and sit around for twenty or thirty minutes and maybe something will fly through or maybe something will happen to to balance out you know the the composition of the scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is. Um... What I did, and so basically I didn't change the composition. Now I've seen other people's, I think I probably should have brushed these rocks out because <laughs> mm -hmm. I didn't even notice that. So I, I, um, I actually brushed highlights in on these rocks on the left um, to lighten them up a bit, but I didn't even notice this, which is so weird now that everyone else has pointed it out. Um, I used a series of, of linear filters to obviously darken the sky, you can see it's significantly darker than over here. And then to lighten the um, water down here. And then I've increased the color to make those reeds pop a bit more. But Rachel, I really didn't. I really like the color of the main body of the water. Did you do anything or is that, or is that just lightning? Uh, no, I didn't change the color. I, uh, oh, I may have, no, I may have actually pulled some, yeah, I may have changed the color. Yeah. yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. I like, I like your rocks that are under the water in the foreground. You've got a lot more detail. Oh, I dehazed that water. I brushed in a dehaze filter on the water so you could see more detail underneath the water. Mm -hmm. That's, That's how I got that. Yeah. Hey, Rachel, as long as you're in Lightroom, will you take your image and bring the whole image down half a stop? I just want to see something. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, like yeah. That? A little bit less. Maybe a. Right there. Yeah, that actually yeah. is better. Yeah. yeah. Looks more real. Yeah. Now make that full screen. Yeah, I think that's a winner. Yeah. Very nice. You gotta move those bars, the right and left bar. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. Okay, hold on. Just get rid of these. Okay. How's that? Nice. Oh, so I think that's perfect. I yeah. love that. And I just want to go back to what you said. So you actually just dehazed that the foreground underwater rocks. I I just got a brush and I selectively brushed that water at the front of the image, and then I applied a dehaze filter to bring yeah. out that detail. Yeah, I, I never thought of using dehaze on yeah. something in the water. You got it. Cool I would idea. never have thought to do that, and it really worked. That's yeah. like, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I, sh 
obviously I shot it with a polarizing filter, but there was still a reflection that you can see in the um, raw. So I just dehazed it to pull it up a bit more. Um, very yeah. smart, very smart. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I've never thought of doing that before. Now I have to go find some pictures I can do that with. <laughs> <laughs> you know, which is also another thing, which is what's one of the things that's really useful about these kinds of sessions is that you learn some tricks that you can then go back and apply to other images that you haven't, you know, processed correctly or to the best of your satisfaction. I mean, I saw Brian today post something on Facebook and I think Brian, you said you shot it three years ago and you're just getting it the way you want it now. Brian, you're muted if you're trying to talk. I have to keep going from vertical to horizontal and all my uh, controls disappear. Yes, that was from 2019. And, um, you know, it's just, you grow, you learn. Well, what? you get older anyway. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe you learn something and uh, uh, you, you, it's kind of fun, you know, when you have time, most of us don't, to go back and look and say, wow, you know, that I think I could have done something with that. I, I, I should try. And yeah, it's fun. Yep. No, you got the right bar still, Rachel. There you go. Rachel, you're Rachel, muted. I think, Rachel, you're muted, yeah. All right. Um, so as you can see, everyone sees our image? Yep. OK. This was an overcast day again, so there's really no sky to speak of. Um, so it's pretty sort of dull. but. Let's see what um, the first one is. And I think this is yours, Michael. Can you explain this, please? <laughs> yeah. so, the, <laughs> so the first thing I did was I didn't like that I had to start from the right and go to the left. So I flipped it because most of us read from left to right. And most of us think about motion from left to right. And I just thought it would, it would be a better image if we're going from left to right. And because this is not a photojournalism assignment, um, we're creating art. I didn't really have a problem with flipping the entire part of this world from one side to the other. Um, and then, you know, whenever I see all this texture, and even though the image is a color image, it's really a monochrome image because all the colors are the same. And as long as all the colors are gonna be the same, I'd rather them be black and white and where I can really bring out the texture. So I said, okay, well, let me make it black and white. And there were, there were lots of areas that I could darken to provide a level of contrast. Um, and then when I was looking at the sky that was so horrible, cause there was nothing there, I used the sky replacement in Photoshop. Um, and then as long as I was in Photoshop, <laughs> because that road looked exactly like the road that the road runner should be running on. I said, well, let's get the road runner. <laughs> and so I got, I got a, um, a little piece of road runner off, off the web. And then in order to make him look like he was in motion, um, I created um, a second layer and then um, did a very long motion blur, as you can see, and then I duplicated that motion blur layer about 25 times to make it um, to make it stronger, and then used a gradient mask to eliminate the motion blur on the front of the bird so that it looked like he was running. And that's what happened. Meep, meep. <laughs> uh, you know, I just have a comment. Um about flipping the image. And that um, many of you know, I actually ran an art gallery for a number of years. And this whole looking at things from left to right or right to left, um, 
we had a number of clients who lived in other cultures. And I always wondered if that affected the way they looked at an image. And apparently it does to some extent. Yeah, it does. It absolutely does. Yeah. I, I talked to a number of people from uh, Asian countries and they were like, yeah, I mean, it, it was it was interesting how they would uh, how your mind is taught to process something, mm -hmm. you know, whether you read left to right, right to left, or actually in some cultures, top to top bottom. To yeah. I've flipped it also, um, but not for as lofty a reason as Michael did, but just because it <laughs> felt better to me. <laughs> it just, just, I just, I felt like I needed to go the other direction. Um, but the, uh, the, the uh, Red Runner is great. Yeah. But the black and white photograph is beautiful too, you know, even without the Roadrunner. <laughs> yeah. So, I really mean, good. actually, all I did, I was a little bit lazy in that respect. All I did was make it black and white. Oops, that's Michael's. Hang on. Um, wait. So, yeah, Gigi, I just did that. And I didn't even flip it, I just made it black and white. But that's using the Nick tools that I talked about before, just one of the Silver FX Pro filters. I didn't even bother to go and do the sky in Photoshop, which I probably should have. Um, but yeah, it does lend itself really nicely to a monochrome image for sure. I think I may do this. And I have actually a couple of pictures of actual Roadrunners. Maybe I'll stick oh, them Oh, really? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, David, funny you should mention that. So, so my first thought was to get an actual Roadrunner, um, which I did. And when I put the real Roadrunner in, because a Roadrunner is not a really cool looking bird, <laughs> and it wasn't, think, and it wasn't very cool. So I love Roadrunners. I, they have so much personality. Yep. So cool. Yeah. So um, Randy is not here tonight, but Randy also did an interpretation. Oh, I'm messing this up badly. Sorry. This is Randy's interpretation. So he, as you can see, he's actually cropped it mm -hmm. um, from the left and the right. And um, I like, I'm not sure how he put this kind of purple mask into it, but I, I sort of like that photo mask that's made it a bit purple. Um, and in, intensified the color of the rocks, made them a bit more red. So, yeah, I kind of oh. like that. I don't, I don't know how he did it. Randy's in Yellowstone. He sent me a text message to say that they got massively dumped on with snow last night, and he's um, uncomfortable driving in the snow. That's how much there is. So, wow. yeah. yeah. So if anybody has a guess on what he did there. Okay. I mean, he made a square. <laughs> Almost a square, yeah. It looks I mean, like he did a mask of the sky, but um, mm -hmm. it didn't work out too well because of the little haloing at the top. I think, he, I think he brushed it. I don't think he masked it. Yeah, I would kind of agree. You don't think he used the select sky in Lightroom? Okay. We'll have to ask it though. So. But yeah, he really intensified the colors in the. Uh... It almost looked like he added a magenta tint to the whole thing. That's what I was thinking, Michael. I was thinking that, you know, you could do that in Photoshop with a photo filter, mm -hmm. like a, add a, a magenta photo filter at like 20% or something to get that effect. But I don't know if he did that. I mean, he could have done it in Lightroom right under color temperature. You can move the tint slider. Sure, yeah. It's easier more, than going into Photoshop. <laughs> it's a lot more contrast to his too. Yeah, I like what he's done. I like it. Yeah, Wait, have just where is this, by the way? Oh, this is Capitol Reef National Park. Where is that? Um, it's it's near Moab and near um, uh, okay. yeah, yeah it's Capitol it's Reef. Not, this is the scenic drive part of it, and um, 
it's incredible it's yeah, just really so beautiful and it's hard hardly anyone goes there because it's right near capitol reef and arches sorry it's near arches in moab so everyone flocks to arches mm -hmm. and nobody goes to capitol reef and i love it because of that because there's hardly yeah. anyone there yeah, it's pretty it's very majestic yeah yeah, yeah all Rachel, of those is are it, in, is, in Rachel, is this is this the um south south of the main road or or north of the main road oh i don't i don't know Remember? um you, do you know where the where fruta is and the visitor center Barney? yes yeah mm -hmm. so, so you know when you go to the visitor center and you take the road to the scenic drive yeah um, okay so it's and you of head the, yeah south. and you head yeah. all the way down to the bottom you've got to turn around when you get to the great wash this is that road that follows the cliffs there yeah yeah, yeah. No, I, I love I love Capitol Reef and and uh, going north, you have to ford the river, at least you used to. Um, uh, and okay. you get get in that back country and it is well, you have the whole place to yourself. It's really it's, right. it's great. You're like, talking about like Cathedral Valley area, aren't you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I haven't done that. I think David Morgan's done that, but um, I, I don't have the right off road vehicle to do that. So I haven't done that yet. Is Marilyn still on? She dropped off. Okay. I don't know. I think David Morgan's done that. I'm here. Okay. Have you guys been to um, to Cathedral Valley in Capitol Reef? Um, I went through there on my motorcycle about 15 years ago. Okay. But um, oh, it wasn't a picture taking kind of a trip. Uh, David Morgan went so many places in Utah and I was re-roofing my house so i don't know what he's been doing. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um so, it, I, did i miss someone's photo from here was it susan did you speak up before and say that you had also processed this image um i did the, i did the wolf yeah i oh, spoke I up i spoke up rachel it's donna um, and um, I didn't like it. Sorry, a cat just jumped on me. Um, I didn't like it and did so didn't submit it. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, I did it in black and white also though, um, but it was getting too grainy for me, so I didn't submit. Okay, all right. I'm just worried I missed it. Oh. Okay, so the next one is um, this image here. Can everyone see that? Is it in full screen? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so um, this one here is Gigi again. So let's put Gigi's beside the raw, and Gigi can talk us through it. Yeah. So Gigi will tell us what you did. The raw is on the right. Gigi's is on the left. Okay, I, you know, there's a lot going on in that picture. I mean, it's just a lot of different things to look at. There's the grass, and there's the snow, and there's the river, and then there's the mountains and the sky. So. To me, it was, after looking at it for a long time, I almost thought it was really more about the mountains in the background, or at least that's what drew me in. So that's why I cropped out a lot of the snow. And um, to me, I was just letting the water kind of lead your eye to the mountains. So um, I don't, I didn't do too much in terms of, of brightening it up. I brightened it up a little bit. Um, I tried to get some detail in the mountains. I probably did something to the sky, but I, I don't really like it. If I did something, I don't really like it. I think it's too blue and I wish it was more light. But anyway, I didn't do a whole lot to this picture because I thought it was nice. I just thought it was a little confusing as to what to look at. It looks like you took out the power pole. I did, yeah. No oh. Yeah. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't easy, by the way. Oh, yeah, you took out both the power poles. Good job. Yeah, I didn't see that. Okay. Nice. All right, let's see. Um, this, I think, is Michael's. Um, Michael, this is yours, isn't it? Not? Yes. So tell us what you did, Michael. Um, I obviously darkened the whole thing up. It. Um, let me 
Let me just look to see what I did in my Lightroom because I don't remember, but I do have it handy. Uh, I like that you can see the tracks in the snow on yours actually. That's kind of nice. At the front of the image here, there's little yeah. animal tracks. And you know, this is something you can't fix in post, but I would have loved just a little bit more of the left to catch that bend in the river. Mm, mm -hmm. So, so what I essentially did was, is I took the whole image down two and a half stops wow. and brought the whites and the shadows back. So essentially um, what that essentially does is it raises the level of contrast. Um, mm -hmm. and, I, and I brought up the saturation just a little bit and and that was actually all I did. Mm -hmm. so it was primarily just global adjustments. And I probably, you know, now, now that I'm looking at it again, um, I probably should have brought the whites up a little bit more and fixed the hue of the sky because that's not really a, a color of the sky. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I but I do yeah. like darker. Yeah. Okay, and then um, this one is mine, I think. Um, have a look what I did. Yeah, this was mine. So I've cropped it like Gigi did as well. I cropped some of this snow out because this is just a lot of dead space that I didn't really think offered much yep. in terms of interest in the image. Um, I also, again, I dehazed the water with a brush mm -hmm. to darken it mm -hmm. um, like I did in that other image. And then I think I just pulled up some of the... Um, probably some of the red and blue in the calibration panel, like I showed you for the autumn colors that I did earlier, just to bring these yellows up a little bit. And obviously I've pulled, I pulled the exposure all up down and not two and a half stops, maybe one and a half stops. Rachel, let me ask you a question. So you, when you cropped it, you also changed the aspect ratio to something that is a non-standard aspect ratio. Um, are you well, it looks like I did. I didn't mean to, though. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I wouldn't have meant to do that because I used to do that. And then I realized that it's not the way to do things because it doesn't work anywhere. Right. Um, so I must have, but I didn't mean to. I don't know how I managed to do that. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a, a I think it's something to think about um, when, when we crop. Um, you know, like like I noticed that the the the, the crop that Randy did, it, it wasn't quite a square. Mm. So, you know, that's it's it's harder to frame. It's harder to publish. It's harder to you know. It's it's. I I think for for the most part, it's better to stick with standard aspect ratios if 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 you can. Yeah, would this be a sixteen by ten or not? I don't even know because sometimes I do that if I'm trying to get. Um, I don't think it's quite six. Well, sixteen. Yeah. Mean, it's not really sixteen. We'll, we'll, we'll just click on it and look at the crop real quick. Well, I didn't do it in Lightroom, so I don't know. Uh, if it'll show me. It never I, I don't. I don't actually use Lightroom. I don't like. It. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I um, I use uh, Camera Raw. I, I, might think, you. I think at some point we have to have Rachel give us a. Uh, why she doesn't use Lightroom. Hit keyboard shortcut R, hit letter R. So click on where it says original. Yep. And then click on 16 by nine or 16 by 10 and we'll see. Yeah, it is 16 by 10. 16 by 10. Okay, there you go. Yeah. It'll look great. Yeah, I like it. I think I like the crop. I think it, it, I mean, I don't know if you're, if you're trying to stick with like an eight by 10 or eight, then you, then you might not be showing the photograph that you really intend to. Yeah. I think Michael's point is though, from a printing standpoint. Yeah. And framing. And I, and, and okay. And I'll, I'll add a comment to that. Uh, I wish the printing industry would catch up because I, I tend to like more of a 16.9, 16.10 format. Well, I used to print all of my, I mean, in our Fort Worth competition, 
I would print my own prints and mat them. And they didn't go in a frame, but I mean, you can always mat them so that they would work in any frame. Yeah, that's true. Oh yeah, I mean, if you do custom framing on everything, then totally you can have, you know, yeah. whatever you want. Um, yeah. But, but I, I find that that the buying public um, likes to have aspect ratios that work with other things on their wall. Sure. Yep. So, Michael, what aspect do you crop to? Well, I usually do things on a, on a, on a three by two or a square or my panoramas are 2.5 to one. And I try to stick with those ratios as best I can. Okay. So let's move on to the next one. Um, this is, is, oh. is someone trying to make a comment? No. Um, so again, this photo on the left is raw. And again, the sky wasn't behaving the day I shot this. But um, Barney, this is yours on the right. Do you want to talk to us through that? I love what you've done with it, by the way. I love the way you've highlighted the front of the shop. So can you talk us through that? This is fantastic. Yeah, it's gorgeous. So, um, uh, yeah, I, I, th I think that the, the, this, I'll be this, down uh, in a minute. Hey, Barney, just a second. I don't know who's talking in the background, but it, it's we we've got to make sure we mute. It looked mute. like Jim Turley was trying to talk to um, Rachel. Oh, sorry, Jim. Did I did I not catch what you were trying to say? No, you were talking my life. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's really hard to hear you, Jim. We can barely hear you. It sounds like your microphone is really muffled. It is. Did you want to repeat what you said, Jim? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you properly. Well, I was talking to my wife. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Okay, no worries. <laughs> okay, so um, so Rachel, I really like this. I I, I, I thought that that you you did a, a really nice um, uh, job capturing this, and and to me the mood was, you know, again the winter. And and the the uh, the low light situation um, uh, immediately drove me towards nighttime, and so obviously it was a replacement uh, replace the sky with a simple star pattern, um, and obviously I cropped it uh, cropped it down because I, in the end um, that tree on the left hand side didn't do anything for me. Um, uh, the other thing that that I did here, which I thought was very important, was to to um, correct the uh, um, cor correct the building, um, and you can do this a number of ways. You can do this directly in Lightroom, which actually, in this case, worked out better than uh, I have a, a DXO uh, uh, plugin program that to to that that you use in architectural photography to help straighten the buildings and the like and get rid of the keystone structure. So I did that. Um, and then, of course, it was uh, it was simple to just um, then put a radial filter on the uh, uh, Wells Fargo sign and light that up, and and then brush in the uh, Buford uh, and Company sign uh, with a little bit of uh, lightening up. That's it. Yeah, it looks like you put a spotlight right on the right on the sign. It's yeah. great. Yeah, Love it's it. so great. Yeah. So for everyone that doesn't know what Barney was talking about by straightening the building, you'll notice on the left here on the raw image, see how the line of the building is not straight with the photo. It's le it's leaning, it's on a lean. And then on his image here on the right, it's perfectly parallel, almost parallel to the edge of the photo. So as Barney said, there's two, there's several ways you can do that, but one of them is um you can go straight into Lightroom and it's the, what are the tools called again? These ones. I think it's um, under transform. 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 So, yeah. so if you, can everyone see this? You go into transform. Do, 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 it, transform do, it, do, do it with the raw one, Rachel. Okay, I don't know if I can do it because I haven't done it for ages. But, um, 
especially not in Lightroom, but okay. So here's the, and then you go to trans, develop, transform. And I think you use. Just hit vertical. Just hit vertical, okay. So can everyone see the transform panel here? So you've got all these options off auto guided level full. If you hit vertical, Boop. straightens it for you. See how that worked? So off vertical, off vertical. And it's a subtle difference, but it, 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 it affects the perspective so that, because you obviously you can never get into a position with your camera where you can get the side of the building to be straight like that. So that's, that's how you do it. It's very, very simple. Um, Barney, do you want, what was the other way you said you do it? You use have a DXO plugin. Yeah, there's a, there's a, a DXO plugin that, uh, that you can use, but, uh, that, that, that used to be, uh, I, my, my first try is always with Lightroom now because they've gotten, they've gotten pretty good with that, with that addition. Uh, so that, that, that works, that, that worked really well. Actually, I, I went in and tried it with the, the DXO, uh, um, plug in as well, and it didn't work as well, which surprised me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like what you've done with that photo. It looks great, really. Yeah, the only um, other thing that I did, Rachel, was to uh, add a little bit of brightness to the front, uh, the, the street facing uh, white sections, especially the, 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 the pillars. Um, mm -hmm. to to uh, enhance the difference be with the, between the shade and the and the uh, and the the lit area. Mm -hmm. Nice yeah. capture though. I'm, I, you had you had a really nice eye to, to 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 bring that home. Does everyone know where this is shot? By the way, no, yeah. no. Virginia City. Um, this is, what was that? Was it Virginia City. Yeah, that's right, Virginia City. Um, was that, is this Susan speaking or Kathy? This is Donna. This is Donna. I'm sorry, Donna. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, I live in Bozeman, so it's on crappy days. You head to Virginia City and Nevada City to capture the buildings. Yeah, do you want to tell everyone a little bit about it? Because um, I don't know that many people know about it. Um, it's, it's, you know, one of the, the old ghost towns that's been turned into a tourist trap. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, essentially, but it's it's nice to go there in the winter because there is really no one there, and most of the buildings, like the most of the shops, are closed right in the winter time. Yeah, there's just a couple, and when the snow gets really deep, um, it really looks awesome. I mean, you, it feels and looks like you were back in the 1800s. Yeah, I love it. Um, yeah, this is I'm not gold. really. I was saying, this is sorry, Donna. Yeah, this is a gold mining area um, right outside here. There's uh, Alder Creek, um, which is just full of all the old gold mining tailings um, from uh, the days of yore. Yeah, and actually um, Ben Nardi, if anyone knows Ben Nardi, who's also in the club, he used to live in this area. So he, he told me about this area. It's really beautiful. Um, so the, Michael, this is yours. Do you want to talk us through what you've done here? Yeah, I mean, when I saw it, it just struck me as something from way back in the past. So I just went into Lightroom first, and I actually converted it to black and white, uh, brought up the blacks, brought up the whites, added a whole bunch of grain to it. Um, and then I brought it into Nick, where I added the sepia and I added the border. So I mean, it only took about a minute to do it, but I just wanted to make it look really old. Yeah, and I think you could actually, like if you put a, a couple dressed in old timey outfits in front of it, you could sell it for 50 bucks, right? <laughs> <laughs> Did you add branches to the tree? Uh, no, but I when I started adding the grain and I brought the blacks up, it, it brought up the rest of the tree that you can't really see. Interesting. Yeah, the sky was really blown out, as you can see, because it was overcast today. Um, all right, we've got to move on because it's almost 10 past eight. So uh, this is mine just quickly. I, what did I do? I didn't straighten it and now I feel like a fool. Because <laughs> <But>, um, <laughs> it's so obvious now, isn't it? 
but it's got this lean on it. Um, all I did was do scar replacement in Photoshop. And then I think I put um, a photo filter on the sky to make it kind of yellow, to make it sort of look two-tone, but I don't think it's very successful really. Anyway, let's move on, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> so this next one is... Oh, wait a minute. I, I actually think you had the makings of a great idea there. So uh, you can move on, but I, I kind of like where you were going. Yeah, I was trying to do a sort of two-tone colour in the sky versus black and white buildings, but I didn't really finish it. Um, but that was what I was thinking of. Yeah. Okay, you can move and, on now. I'm sorry. Anyway, um, so let's move on. The next raw one is this one here. Does everyone know where this is, by the way? Yep. No. It's the Bobby Sox trees. Oh, oh, right, Yellowstone. And Yellowstone. And Yellowstone, yeah. So that's the Bobby Sox trees. Now, this first one, I think, is Gigi's again. Gigi, is this yours? It is. It's Gigi's. Oh, you may be muted, Gigi. Is she still on, David? She's there, but she's muted. Okay, I'm sorry. I was saying that what I really wanted to do with this picture is to put a bison on that trail, but <laughs> I couldn't remember how to do it. <laughs> I need Photoshop lessons again. Um, so yeah, so I mean, I, as I looked at the histogram for this picture, it was all in the middle. There wasn't anything to the right and anything to the left. And so I just pulled over the white part and and went left with the dark part and um, I think I ended up doing something to make the sky even lighter than it was just to increase the contrast. I'm a little unhappy as I look at it seeing how blue the snow is. I don't remember it being that way but I think if I were doing it again I'd probably do something about that blue so it's not so blue and more white. But yeah, that's all. Okay, cropped nice. out. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And you cropped out the left tree, did you? Yeah, right? I did. yeah. That tree there, yeah. sort of half in a frame. Yeah. And and that's I took this raw photo and I didn't edge check, as you can tell, because you know, normally when you're in the field, you should always check the edges of your images as you're shooting to make sure there's not something there that you don't see at the time. This is an example of me not edge checking because look at that. There's a really half a tree, a quarter of a tree there. Anyway, you gave, you gave us something to do. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I did it on purpose. That's right. So, Michael, this is yours. Can you? Oops. Oh, how do I keep doing that? Because I'm a fool. Um, tell us about yours, Michael, please. Oh. I've been here a whole bunch of times and I've always wondered what it would look like at either sunrise or sunset. So I decided to see. Um, and um, what I did with it was I obviously knocked the color temperature way up to 10, 11,000 Kelvin. Um, and then I used um, a gradient filter to darken the bottom. And I actually added more haze using the dehaze slider in the other direction. Um, and that pretty much got me to where it felt like the sun was coming up just over the horizon, over those back row of trees. Very nice. So, and then um, this one is mine. And Gigi, you said you wanted to put a bison Oh <laughs> well, I I put a, I put something snowman. else. Can you see <laughs> that? Cool. that was good. <laughs> very cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not very helpful, but anyway. <laughs> so the next one, we got some really interesting um, submissions. This is um, obviously just some cyanobacterial mats in Yellowstone, and um, people interpreted this in lots of really different ways. This one I particularly like. This is yours, Barney. Do you want to talk us through this? Sure. Yeah, I I, I really like this, and and I, I 
you know, uh, Rachel, when I first saw it, I, I thought that it was a, uh, I thought exactly where, where it was what you shot it. But then as I looked at it more and got into this, I, I was wondering whether these were kind of like stick cable stays that you see on the side of the road that uh, I, I know um, some of us tend to like to shoot. But um, um, just in playing, lo looking at that, um, I, I decided to go into a particular area that drew my attention and then rotated it. And what I tended to see is up on the left-hand corner, I started to see faces in this. Um, and so the more I looked, then the, the you know, right where you're pointing, uh, there's a, a large face and then there's a face inside of that, uh, just to the right of that. Um, there was another one right in there. Um, the, 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 the main body um, seemed to have more of a human form to it um, uh, with a side view to it. Um, so that, that's what kind of got me going in this. And, and what I did was take this into Silver Effects Pro and um, uh, did a conversion with a slight, I, I, I forget whether I used a tungsten uh, a little tungsten filter on it or, or, or just what in order to give it some color. But then of course they I played around with the contrast of, uh, and uh, detail extractor as well in color, effect, color effects pro. Uh, I'm sorry, the um, uh, silver effects pro is what I use for the, the um, uh, black and white conversion. So uh, yeah, I ended up with, with this, which doesn't look like what it started with, but I kind of like it. Yeah, really cool. It looks like something you'd find in a hotel room, and I don't mean that as an offense. As a yeah, as an offense, I mean it looks really cool. It's you know like a really cool abstract. Yeah, and that's um. Yeah, Barney, I, I we need to talk about what you did in the sixties. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't remember. It was all a blur. <laughs> So, Barney, you talked about faces. So there, it looks like there's a face here. Yeah. But then that could be a nose and that could yep. be an eye it, as well. Yeah. So when, when and so I, I went back and, and just kind of walked away from this image for a couple of hours, then came back and looked at it and saw an, a whole nother set of, of different different shapes and so yeah, that I I, I think you, you caught something really interesting uh, in that composition, and I you know I've taken I've taken uh, you know um, uh, m m uh, hundreds of these images and I, and I I get them on the screen and this is the first time that I found something that was to me you know worthwhile to pull out of it. Be a good roar shock test. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's also, you know, the name for that is pareidolia, when you see faces in things, uh, pareidolia, yeah. A little bit. Oh, okay. Escher, yeah, it's a little bit Escher-like, not from the looping, but from the uh, the texture, I guess. It is. Yeah, yeah, that, you're right, yeah. So Michael, oh, hang on, who's this one here? So Gigi's, is, this is Gigi's. Do you want to tell us about yours, Gigi? Um, well, I I, um, I just, not really. I mean, I don't, I just increased the, I didn't do much. I just increased the contrast and, and probably the saturation because it seemed a little pale to me. But um, some of these other ones that I'm looking at, like I guess Michael's, the yellow one looks, Fantastic, and I love to hear from him. Well, actually, no, I, I, I think this is great contrast because it actually makes it. I've taken a lot of these shots too, and this almost makes you think it's uh, roots on rocks as opposed mm. to the. Uh, well, I always refer to it as some sort of algae or something, but whatever Rachel called it. <laughs> I, I, I think it is. I, I think it look, looks like a photograph from 20,000 feet in an airplane. Yeah, that also, I agree. Right. Well, I think it also it, looks it, like yarn. It also looks like yarn to me. Like it could be like yeah. a wall hanging or something. 
Yeah, I mean, the way you and Barney both process that gives it a really, it, it would throw me off if I didn't know where it was, if I hadn't seen the original. Uh, sorry, where was this? Oh, uh, this is in Yellowstone, and I think it was the Midway Geyser Basin, and I think I was lying on my belly to take this, um, though it was the winter trip we did in February this year. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, let's go back to the original real quick. That's the original. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you had a lot of, uh, of the steam coming up. Yeah, it's really- Yeah, and there's, uh, this is obviously ice. Yep. Ice here, yeah, because it was winter. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you, you caught a really interesting picture I think you can do a lot with. Mm-hmm, yeah. So let's have a look at Michael's version of it then. This is Michael's. Tell us about yours, Michael. So when I was looking at this, I was trying to figure out, you know, what what would make it like interesting to put on your wall. And I kind of wish I had done what Barney did, but I didn't. Um, <laughs> and and I wanted it to look more like a painting. So the first thing I did was I brought it into Photoshop and I added. Um, oil brush strokes to it. So if you zoom in at 100% on the full screen, you might be able to see the brush strokes. Can you just hit that? Just just click on it, Rachel. Oh, hang on, sorry. Um, yep. Oh. oh. I don't know if, it, well, whatever. Um, it doesn't want to get any bigger, sorry. If you zoom in, you'd actually see brush strokes on that. Um, and then I just started playing with a whole bunch of tonal hue changes and posterizing and solarization until I got it into something that was, you know, really different, really crazy, but I thought was kind of interesting. You know, some, sometimes you just start pushing, yeah. see what happens and interesting things happen. Yeah, I can see the posterization now that you mention it. Yeah, that's really cool. That's definitely going to be in the foyer of the hotel in Jackson, right? Well, that was, yeah, I mean, I was thinking about, you know, how do I, how do I make this so someone wants to put it on their wall? That was, yeah. what I, that's, that's what, what, that was my goal. That's very cool. Okay, so we're down to the last image now, and everyone seems to have had a go at this one. So this is a wolf, obviously. Um, this role was taken at the Grizzly and Wolf Discovery Center in February this year, where has, has everyone been there or anyone, has anyone not been there? I have not. I was haven't been. Okay. Um, this is actually a rescue center, but I don't think the wolves are rescued anyway. Um, they rescue grizzlies that have come into human conflict and would otherwise be euthanized. And so uh, it's a not-for-profit place in West Yellowstone. And we went there as part of our Yellowstone trip in February. Anyway, so let's see. I think this is Gigi. This is yours, Gigi. Do you want to talk us through what you did? Hmm. Um, well, I tried to bring down the brightness of his fur on the top of his head. Um, I cropped it a little bit so that he wasn't directly in the middle. And then just, um, just, I don't remember what else I did, but um, I guess I just lightened up the fur a little bit so I could see it better. I tried to, oh, I know, I tried to increase the yellow in his eye because I thought that was pretty dramatic. You also brought up the texture in the snow. Whether that was intentional or not. I don't even remember. It's been a little while. Yeah, see his yellow eye. Barney, this is yours. Do you want to talk us through what you did? Sure. Um, this was, uh, uh, most, uh, most of this was done in Lightroom and, uh, you know, um, kudos to Adobe for the, 
for the uh, um, subject selection. Um, that that actually worked really well with this. Because what I wanted to do is darken that, darken the background to, to get the wolf to kind of pop out. Um, and it did a it did a fantastic ma mapping job, uh, masking job rather, um, uh, and 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 picked up all those individual hairs. And so um, with that, uh, with the subject selected, I darkened the background. Um, and then in the foreground, it really bothered me to have a, have a lot of texture in this in the in the snow. So I just uh, did a took the took the image into Photoshop and did a a quick selection, a manual selection of the snow and just added some motion blur to it. Um, there, there's a lot more that that I, I think is worthwhile doing to this, but uh, and then um, uh, it was to you know, just do some selective. Um, um, sharpening with um, um, Topaz uh, sharpen. Um, I ran this. I ran this through through denoise first, of course. I ran everything through denoise first uh, before before starting with the rest of this, and then finished up with uh, some uh, uh, subjects sharpening uh, with the, the Topaz sharpen AI, mm -hmm. and and of course cropped it down a little bit. Nice. Uh, this is oh that's yours again sorry I must have put it yeah in. this is and that and that that's just the black and white oh. version of it um, with with a coloration with the coloration kept in is kept in, in the eye uh, Barney yeah, can so I that, ask uh, sorry no go ahead um, I, I'm I'm new to topaz denoise and what I've read was that it's best to take in the raw image. So if you if you import it into Lightroom first and then denoise, is it still a raw image from Lightroom, or do you actually well, need yeah, to? Yeah, I mean it comes. It, it stays as a raw image, and, and it stays for us. It stays as a NEF image, and uh, yeah, and and of course you 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 can't sharpen a NEF image, uh, but you can put it through denoise. And and so so then you can do the you can do the raw. Uh, yeah. I so so it, it, go, it goes into denoise and then it comes out as a, as a tiff uh, tiff folder tiff file rather. Okay, and then you bring it back into Lightroom and then adjust it all from there yeah. after denoise. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, this one is Michael's. Michael, tell us about it, please. So I pretty much did what Barney did, um, did a subject selection, darkened the background, cropped it a little bit to move the wolf so that there was a little bit more room for her to move through the image. And then I used um, a little tiny radial circle to bring up the um, color in the eye and that was about it. Nice, okay. And this one is um, Susan's. Can you talk us through this, Susan, please? Um, well, I started to use Topaz and I wasn't, I didn't like any of the textures. So I decided to just simplify it by cropping. And I used curves to block out the, the, the background of the tree or whatever was behind him. And, um, then I did a lot of cloning around him, and um, I, I like the backlit um, hair around his, you know, around his face, and um, it gives him a little more ominous look to have the black background, which I liked. Mm. So, and it just, I loved his face. So, um, you know, I think this brought his face out to me um, without all the the background you know, parts, but I also like Barney's eye. <laughs> I, I think that looked, I like that a lot. It stands out a lot, but um, yeah, I did pretty, a simple, uh, you know, simple work on it and tried to keep the little, like, that's like, I think a little snow speck above his right ear. So, um, you know, anyway, that's all I did to it. And I did, um, I did it in Photoshop raw and then, um, just, you know, then did the rest in Photoshop. 
Yeah, I really like the way that you've maintained all the very fine detail in the fur from the backlighting. That looks fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's Thank really you. Really nice. Thank very you. Very Robert Redford like. <laughs> well, I was so happy because I've never really photographed wolves. I've seen them, but not photographed. So for me, it was, I love doing it <laughs> just to have the image. Oh, yeah. It's a beautiful post processing that you've done. Thank you. It looks, and if you if you want to practice wolves, you, like I said, this place is called the um, Wolf and Grizzly Discovery Center in West Yellowstone. Mm -hmm. And they have this. This is a captive wolf. So mm -hmm. I should make that clear. Um, but they do have white and black wolves there. And that's where we shot a lot of this stuff over February this year when we went on the Yellowstone winter tour. They are rescued. Rachel, they are rescued wolves also. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's it. Um, I'm going to stop sharing this and go back to the PowerPoint presentation.